Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Thanks so much for watching. It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty. Thank you, Jen, for making this. Let's just put it, let's just put it maybe over here. All right, this is a very special episode of Strictly Dumpling because never in Strictly Dumpling history, I mean, I, I've shown you guys a lot of dumplings, I've eaten a lot of dumplings, but I never showed you how to make a dumpling before. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna show you guys how to make a traditional Chinese dumpling or jiaozi that's coming up, but I am gonna show you guys how to make a Chinese pork bun. So it, it is a type of dumpling. This is like the Jiaozi's cousin. It's bigger, it's plumper, it's just as delicious. And guys, we're gonna keep it pretty simple in this video. I'm gonna show you how to make a simple pork bun. The reason I'm doing that and not doing like a cabbage pork bun or like a green bean pork bun is because once you master this, you can put any vegetables in here. You can add celery, mushrooms, cabbage, carrots, tofu, leeks. Most vegetables would pair up great in a pork bun because all that pork fattiness is gonna sink into the vegetables gonna make it taste delicious. So today we're gonna make just a pork bun, but do not underestimate this thing. This little baby is fluffy, it's soft, it's juicy, it's porky. You're gonna love it. One of my favorite things ever. Mm. <sighs> All right, let me show you how to make this, you know, after I, I finish. Here's all the ingredients you need to make your pork buns. Some parchment paper, one teaspoon of finely chopped ginger, one stick of green onions, some sugar, white pepper powder, sesame oil, oyster sauce, Chinese rice cooking wine, soy sauce, salt, some yeast, cornstarch, all-purpose flour, and of course, some pork. A couple of things I wanna mention. First of all, that beautiful, it's my tape, my tape sucked. Also, when it comes to the dough, you can 100% use all-purpose flour, but if you do have access to it, uh, to a Chinese supermarket, Try to get this, Zhongxi Mianfen. This does translate to uh, all-purpose flour, but this dough is specifically used to make dumplings and buns, so this is gonna make your dumplings and buns come out a lot whiter. And if you use the all-purpose flour from a Western supermarket, your bun's gonna come out not as white, it's gonna be a little uh, yellowish, but it's gonna taste just as good. Something else I would invest in, if you have a regular steamer that's 100% okay, um, but I love a bamboo steamers because what it does is that the bamboo actually soaks up a lot of the moisture, and that way the excess moisture doesn't get on your buns. So let's get started on our buns of anti-steel, of fluffy, soft, let's just get started. First, let's work on our dough. Take a bowl, add three quarter cups of warm water, add a teaspoon of sugar, get that a little mix, add a teaspoon of yeast, then just leave it alone for about 10 to 15 minutes until the yeast activates. When your yeast is forming bubbles at the top of the water, that means it's done. That aside. Now take a big mixing bowl and add two cups of flour. Take your water with the yeast, mix a little bit, and just add it in three intervals. Each time you add some water, add your water slowly into the flour and just stir it in one direction. Now just get your hands in there and start kneading the dough. If you feel like you don't have enough water, uh, mixed in with your flour. Just add a teensy bit more. What you don't want to do is add too much moisture. You don't want your dough to be too soft. You'd rather have it a little harder, a little stiffer than too soft. You're gonna knead your dough for about 10 minutes until it's smooth on the surface. Make sure you put the dough in a big enough container because it's gonna expand twice in size. And just cover that in plastic wrap. And we're gonna find some place warm to store this for about an hour and a half or until, again, this dough rises twice in size. And if you don't have a warm place in your house, what I like to do is warm up my oven just a little bit. Now keep in mind, don't turn your oven heat too high and you're cooking the dough. Just keep it around 80 degrees Fahrenheit atmosphere. While we wait for the dough to rise, let's prepare our pork. Chop now let's start wrapping the buns. Put in a tablespoon of filling. Now what you're gonna do is keep your thumb on the inside of the wrapper and just simply kind of kind of fold it into a fan. You see that? Just go like that, right here. Go like that, squeeze, and then use this finger here to help push the dough over into the fold. And your thumb is gonna keep the filling inside the dough. Pat it down. When you do this, don't put too much. Don't like go too far. Just a little bit. Your goal is to do over 10 of these little folds. So two, three, a little bit. And then as you're doing it, pull up a little bit on your dough. Thumb should always kind of be positioned here at the end of the day. So fold, little fold, little fold. Don't squeeze like the middle part. Just squeeze the top. Catch your filling down. And then just twist. And that's how you make a beautiful little dumpling 
with, uh, with a little hole on top. This is called the fish mouth because it kind of looks like a goldfish mouth. And that's what your thumb is doing. I don't think you saw what, what my thumb did. Let's do another one. Thumb on the inside, make a little fan. Keep making the little fan. Pinch the very, very top. All right, this is the tricky part. This is the part that got me stumped for like a long time. Now, when you get to the end, it's gonna be like this. You're still gonna make another little fan, but here, what I'm gonna do is my finger is gonna go in and my thumb is kinda gonna, gonna go into this whole opening. And I'm gonna squeeze this, this part, is he here? And this part together, okay? This part and this part together. So I'm just gonna squeeze that together. And also, I'm gonna kinda just like twist it. And there you go. That's how you make a little little goldfish mouth and all the pretty ridges. One last time, I'm gonna put just a little bit of filling in this one so I can show you guys the fold so you can see it better. Again, thumb on the inside, finger pushing the ridge over, squeeze the top. All right, keep doing that. Little bitty ridges. All right, you wanna do, like I said, 10 folds at least on a single bun. So keep going, keep going, keep going. And again, this is always the tricky part. Closing point, all right? Still gonna push this little ridge over. I'm going to stick this part with this part, then use my thumb and stick both of those parts on this part. Hopefully that makes sense. So the ridge is gonna come, then I'm gonna twist it a little more and just kinda tap it on that side. And then just shape it a little bit, and that's how you get a beautiful little bun here. Look how cute, look at the little bun dance. That's the bun macarena. It's the bun earthquake, it's the bun shake. And this is where the parchment paper comes in. I took my paper and I cut it into little squares and I'm just gonna put my dumpling on top of the paper and lay it inside my little wooden tub here. And just let it sit in a warm place for about another 20, 30 minutes and these things are gonna grow even larger. When you're ready to cook, add some warm to hot water in your steamer. Sit the balls on top and then just let them chill there for about 10 to 15 minutes until it rises a bit more. After 10 minutes, Bring the water to a boil. Wait till the buns boil and then cook it for an additional 20 minutes. Once the buns are done and you turn off the fire, and this is really, really important, do not take the cover off. Otherwise, your buns are gonna sag and nobody wants saggy buns. So keep the top on for another five minutes. Time's up, let's see what we got. Wow, look how pretty these things are. I mean, these are just the most adorable little buns ever. They kind of look like my, my little Strictly Dumpling logo. These are so soft and tender and juice is just kind of oozing out from the top. Man, these look delicious. Now, before we dig in, let's make some sauce for the buns. I like just a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of Chinese vinegar, sesame oil, and definitely some hot oil. So there you go, guys. Let me just take one of these babies out of here. Piping hot, absolutely beautiful. And like I mentioned, if you just used all-purpose flour from a Western supermarket, your, your buns are probably gonna be a little more yellowish than mine, but just remember, the taste is all it matters. Let's see how this tastes. Dip it in my sauce a little bit. I think I put too much oil in this sauce. Cheers. Oh. That, that is delicious. Oh my goodness. I'm not, wow. Mmm. Oh my God. The pork fat melted into the bun. So the bun itself is just like, it's just beaming with flavor. Let me just open this for you guys so you can see what's inside. A lovely pork filling on the inside. See how, see how juicy it is? If I squeeze it just a little bit, you can see the juice coming out of that filling. Even the bun itself, without any dipping sauce, look at that. That's all fatty, porky, delicious juice soaked into that bun. Don't even need any dipping sauce. This is good on its own. See all that juice that's in the bun right now? This is why I love using ground pork that's either 70, 30, or 20, 80. You're gonna get a lot of this fatty goodness. But still, with the dipping sauce, mm. You guys don't even need to make the dipping sauce all that fancy. If you can't handle the spice, just put a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar. Or if you don't want to mess with this whole thing, just dip it in a little bit of sriracha. That's all you need. I already finished two of the buns in like a minute. This thing is, is, is seriously, ridiculously good. So there you go, guys. The first quasi-dumpling tutorial video on this channel. And please go home and try this because a lot of you, I know, don't have access to maybe restaurants that make pork buns. And trust me, if you follow the recipe, it's going to taste just as good as any store. So go 
go home and show off to your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your parents, whoever it is, they're really gonna be impressed when they taste this. All right guys, all the ingredients to this recipe is in my description box. I try to find links on Amazon to ingredients that you, you might not be able to find so easily in Western supermarkets, so hopefully that's helpful. Definitely go try this recipe. Like I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. Let me know how your buns turn out. And until we eat again, hmm, I'll see you later.